I'm Harley Tadero. And I'm Brandon. We're with Flathead Farmers 4-H Group, and we show goats. Today, we are going to show you how to kid a goat. Now we're going to start with the kidding box. If you come close, you can see that we have wet wipes. You use these before and after you um, kid the goat. Now, um, you kid, you do it before, but you gotta make sure that your fingernails are clipped because sometimes, not always, but sometimes, the kid will get stuck inside the dough and you might have to get your hand in there and help it out. Like, because sometimes they are in weird positions, like, they aren't coming out right because how they're supposed to come out is they're supposed to have two feet forward, head, body, and then legs. Sometimes they'll have one foot forward and one curled under. And this is bad because shh, it gets caught up inside the dough and it makes it miserable for her and the kid and sometimes either or can die. Moving on, we have towels and newspapers. Towels are to clean off the little baby kids once they come out because they, believe it or not, are very messy. They also help to keep them warm. These you lay under the dough while she is kidding because nasty, nasty liquids come out of her butt. And the newspapers help soak up that liquid so it's not so messy. It's also very soft for the kids. Um, actually, including this, this isn't the right kind of box, but you're going to need a box to kid because um, what you usually want is, you know those like boxes that you have the apples in? The long ones? The long flat ones that are like well, you put them in there so they are out of the way while if she, the dough's having more than one kid. Um, usually you want to put it under the heat lamp because you need a heat lamp for kidding. Because if not, they will get cold and they will freeze. Um, it also helps to just make sure that the dough's in front of it, you know, kind of cleaning it off. But um, while she's kidding the other one, it's out of the way. And it's not really going to go anywhere because it was just born. It's trying to figure out its legs. And the box is kind of like a little barrier for it. So it doesn't run off. <sighs> Moving on. This is for during birth. This, or after birth. These. Um, let's see, what should we do? We, okay, so the baby kid is out of the mom. Now we gotta cut the umbilical cord right after she cleans it, of course. If she cleans it, that means normally that she has accepted it. And um, you don't have to bottle feed. So after you cut the umbilical cord, you're gonna have to clean it off. So we have rubbing alcohol. Um, alcohol pads, either or, I don't think it matters. You can use cotton balls, you know, and then the pads, Q-tips for these. So after you clean that off, you want to soak it in iodine. And usually we have little pill bottles that we pour the iodine in. And then after the iodine is in these pill bottles, I'll show you. We dip the umbilical cord in the iodine. And then we tie it off as close as you can get, well, not too close to the belly, but as close as you can get to the belly, and you tie it off with dental floss. Um, 
once the baby is out of the mom, it's going to be gross, like I said before. So, one useful thing for cleaning is a little nose sucker that you use on babies. You use this to get all the nasties out of their nose once after they're born because they need to take their first breath. So you got to get this out of their nose. It gets in their mouth. So you need to suck it out of their mouths and get that just out of the way because they will they can just choke on that and die. So you don't want that. We have little baby kid Snuggies. These my mother bought at the dollar store and she sewed two little blankets together and sh they're reversible. So little girl, little boy. These help the keep the kid warm. So just in case the heat lamp burns out, which you should probably check frequently. But just in case, if it just stops or burns out, they still have a backup, so they're still warm. And sometimes even the heat lamp isn't enough, so you're going to need both. Um, let's see, we have a baby monitor because, surprisingly, I don't want to be out here all the time watching my goat act like she's in labor. Because, believe it or not, they like to think it's a game. So we have baby monitors. You can use, before we've just used cell phones to just kept them out here so we could listen to them, put it on speaker, but baby monitors are a real help. You just, if you hear um, the doe wrestling around a lot and starting to make a like a grunting noise, she's starting to push. So um, you need to Get your stuff together and come out and help your doe kid. So, real, real help. If you don't want to just come out here and see that the doe has had a kid and it is no longer alive because it either froze or choked or just something went wrong. Or the doe is in peril. None of that is.